So these are the three usual cases of a function being discontinuous. But recently, I thought about another one, but I don't know about the answer, so I wanted to discuss that with you guys. But before we do that, let's talk about these three real quick. For the first one, notice how the graph goes straight up to infinity and this part goes straight down to infinity. So here we say the function has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, so the function is discontinuous. And of course, we can see that from the picture as well. Now for the next one, the graph goes from here to here. This is totally a gap, right? We call this the jump, this continuity. And the difference between a jump versus a phi is that a jump goes from a finite value to a different finite value, as opposed to for vertical asymptote, you have to be dealing with infinity. It could be both sides going to pass infinity, or both sides going to negative infinity, or one goes to pass infinity, the other one goes to negative infinity. Lastly, for this one right here, notice that we have a graph but with an open circle here. But imagine if you can fill in the open circle, then the graph will be continuous. We call this a removable discontinuity. The difference between an RD and a jump is that right here, even though we have an open circle, but if you fill in the open circle, first, that would be really bad because you cannot have two different y values at one x value. I defined the closed circle to be here already, but that's the, the issue. The real situation is that if you fill in the open circle here, the graph is still disconnected, so it's still discontinuous. But this right here, if you fill in the open circle, the graph will be happily contacted, right? So that's the difference between this and that. Now, this is the case I wanted to talk about with you guys. And just to show you that I'm not making this up, so I will give you guys a legitimate equation. And in fact, let me actually give you guys the equation for these three cases as well. For the first one, it's like we have 1 over x minus a. 1 over, if you plug it in here, you get 0. 1 over 0 on the graph. Be aware of getting a vertical asymptote. I know what you're thinking. Right here, this part goes up, right? So this is really negative 1 over x minus a. Next one, when you have a jump, it's usually that we have a piecewise definition of a function. And just be careful at the x value. So x less than a and x greater than or equal to a, then depending on how you want to define the function, this is like a linear, this is like a parabola. So if you have a piecewise definition, pay attention to this value, make sure that they are equal for the y value so that it will be continuous. Lastly, for this one right here, it's usually that you have a rational situation, but you will get a common factor right here, top and bottom. And because we have x at a, so most likely you will have x minus a, x minus a, and in this case, you can cancel them out, so you can remove that. That's the idea. Now, this is the one I want to talk about with you guys today. The one I have in mind is the square root of x squared minus 1. Firstly though, how does the graph of this look like? Just real quick, if you put this to be y, this is the same as squaring both sides. We get y squared equals x squared minus 1. I'm going to move the y squared to the other side and the 1 to the other side, but I will write this as x squared minus y squared being equal to 1. So if you look at this, you actually have a hyperbola. Because x is going first, so it goes left and right like this. But f of x is the square root, it's just a positive square root. So we just have the top portion. So this right here is the graph like this. At 1, you have something like this. At negative 1, you have something like this. Something like that. Now the question for you guys is that, is this continuous? I have never thought about this before. I just thought about this recently. Yeah, throughout my almost like 12 years, career of teaching calculus. What do we call this? Is this the horizontal jump? Like maybe 
a dunk from the free throw line? No, I don't think so. What do you guys call this? Is this continuous? I, I don't know. But if you go back to the logic that we have been using, if the graph of the function is not connected, then it's not continuous, such as this and that. Right, it's not connected, so we call that not continuous. Then of course we'll say this right here, it's also not continuous. But how would you describe this? The function is not continuous. How do you describe that? A horizontal jump? Or yeah. What do you really want to say this is continuous? Well just say or this is one way that people would say continuous on its domain. Do you say that? I will kind of go with this. 1 to infinity, negative 1 to negative infinity like that. It's continuous for this portion and also for that portion separately. But if you look at the whole graph, what do you do? But if you really want to say continuous on its domain, then for this one right here, we can't really say this is discontinuous anymore because the domain for this function is that x cannot be equal to a. So as long as x is not equal to a, then the function right here is continuous and the function is continuous. We're just saying x is not, I'll oh, just write this down. This is discontinuous at x equal to a, right? This is okay. And it's the same thing like this, same thing like this. But, yeah. So, if you have thought about this before, if you have a strong opinion on how you will say a situation like this, please let me know. I'm just going to go for... I don't know, maybe like a horizontal jump. As I said, like make a dunk, and this is like the basket. Yeah, that's a vertical jump, that's a horizontal jump, but I don't know. But anyways, let me know. Anyways, that's it.